Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my channel where today we're gonna do a gumball shaker card. I just bought this new stamp set from Lawn Fawn and it's so dang cute. I just had to make a shaker card out of it. I haven't really jumped too heavily into the shaker card arena, but why not do it before, <laughs> before the craze ends, right? So the piece on the left is for the card front. The piece on the right is gonna be the pieces that I need and I'm gonna color them with the clean color pens on Montval watercolor paper. And if you watched my recent getting started with watercolor video, this is one of the papers that was tested in that. And I'm gonna just make a C shape with a whole bunch of different colors and I'll zoom a little faster through the coloring because it's just a C shape on the bottom of each gumball. And that's gonna help us to watercolor them so that they look a little bit rounded when we're done with it. And I'm going to do all the marker work first instead of doing marker and then water and then marker and then water. The Zig pens are fairly new and lots of you have emailed me and said, I can't use these. I bought them because everybody said I needed them and now I don't know what to do with them. So I'm hoping that I have a few tips for you in this as I'm learning things about them as well because none of us really knows much. And uh, I, I just want to try to help you out as much as I can. They're not something that I think everybody just has to buy. So if, you've hear, if you're hearing people saying you gotta have these, they're not as easy as people are making it sound. And I'll tell you a few reasons for why. So let's get started with the water. I have a brush that has just water on it and I'm gonna clean it in between each use because if you leave any of the color on there, if I leave any of this green and go to another color, the green is going to contaminate another color. So that's one thing, These, this marker moves immediately. And if you, if you have any of it touching another color, it's going to move. Here, I, I wanted to show you a little bit, and of course it didn't do it when I was trying to make it happen. I'm coloring two wet pieces next to each other. I wanted to color the wet pink next to the wet uh, teal color. And I was careful enough that I was able to not have them bleed like crazy, but that is one of the things. If you're coloring something that's got wet, sup next to it just wait for it to completely dry and I mean completely dry because if there's any moisture they will run together in a heartbeat just because that's what these markers do and I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna work on the other piece and that's the good thing about having two pieces you might even want to stamp two or three of whatever you're painting and coloring and then you can work on them in success successive progression and not have to sit and wait and twiddle your thumbs while it's drying so I'm just going to continue painting all of these other gumballs that are going down the front of the card. And I'm kind of just pulling the color around and leaving a highlight spot. If your marker gets crazy on you and starts going all over the place, you can just add that spot in with a pen, like a Signo pen or whatever kind of white pen works where you are. I never have come up with a verdict for why the uh, some of the white pens work in, in some places and, and for some people and they don't for others. Okay, now on the front of the card, I'm going to do this practice piece, trying to figure out how to make these gumballs look like they're behind the gumball. And I'm doing it by not having the stamping going all the way around there. And I'm just going to paint it on with the marker and a water brush. And that's going to make it look like it's behind it. Anytime you have something behind glass, it's going to be a lighter shade. And here we don't really get a lighter color because that's just not what we get but we are getting the fact that there's no black outline around it. So it does look like it's behind it. And this one is going to be cut out. This circle is gonna be chopped out of the card to make the shaker. But the other one, I can now follow where I've put these circles, these semicircles, and created this little look so that when it goes behind there, it's going to look like that piece is behind it. Now, most people may never notice that on the card, but I know it's there. And if you ever want to do a card that's not a shaker, this is how you can create something like that. Okay, back to finishing off all of my little little circles, my little gumballs. And again, making sure that I don't touch wet color to wet color because I don't want all that bleeding and stuff to happen. And some of it is just planning out exactly where you're going to put your colors so that you don't have to do all the waiting in between. So the Zig markers do have really bright colors, but there are also a few dull colors. And it's kind of interesting 
even that like the numbering system doesn't make sense to me. I'm used to the Copic numbering system, of course, which most people don't make any sense of. But here we have a gray marker that's a cool gray and one that's a warm gray. And numerically, if you look at all the grays, I don't really see a pattern <laughs> as far as why one is cool and why one is not. So I'm gonna have to make a little chart for myself in visual color order or something so that I know what colors to pick because it's even having the colors on the end of the marker and the, the color on the the marker that comes with it on the, the back end actually suits it pretty well. So here I tried wiping off some of the gray marker and it didn't come off because it had already dried enough. But look what happens if you put water over top of it. These markers are ready to run the instant water hits them. So I can put more water over top of them and re-wet them and then dab off color. So that means to me that if you're going to buy just a few markers, I would buy darker ones than you think you need because you can always take off color like this. At least you can take it off on decent watercolor paper. You may start getting pilling if you do this too much and too often, but it seems to work here. All right, now time to assemble the rest of the card. So I'm going to take my little finger knife which I find to be a really comfortable one and it works really great. It's a little, little tool by Fiskars and just cut around the inside of that black line. And then of course, since it's watercolor cardstock, it does have a little roughness to it. So I took a Copic marker around the inside. I tried it with one of the zig pens and that was useless for this. So the Copic marker worked, but I'm taking it from the back because this paper, since it's soft watercolor paper, is gonna absorb that Copic and make it bleed. So I'm sacrificing my packaging from the stamp set since I'm putting them in stamp pockets anyway. And I'm gonna use that for my shaker. There you can see my bad stamping on the back. That's why God made two sides to a sheet of paper. And I'm just gonna tape it on the back of there. And then I'm gonna take some of the dimensional adhesive, otherwise known as the precious to many of us. And I'm gonna cut a small, like not very big sliver of it. And I wanna show you a little trick that I use on my shaker cards. This works great when you're doing odd shapes. It's not a straight you know, left or right side and you need to go around something. Just make little snips in it and don't snip all the way through. And then you can just keep turning it as you get to each little juncture in your shape that you want it to make, make it go around. Because this will leave it so that there's no spaces in between. If you're using glitter or little beads or something, you don't want any spaces in, in between there for them to fall out. And it also means that you can just peel up one piece of the whole thing and it just pulls up. Super cute little tip. And now we have the rest of our pieces cut out and ready to go. I, I left enough room around the gumball in the back so that the adhesive will stick to it. And then you want to remember to put any of your, your shaker bits inside before you put your adhesive on. The number of times that I've assembled the whole thing and then left my shaker pieces on the counter has been kind of crazy. And you can see they move around quite nicely in there, in my little jiggly bits. All right, now since I'm me and I am the way I am, I have to add some shadows underneath of my little gumballs. And originally I was going to try to just do some little lines like this and I decided I wanted to add a little water, a little softness to them. So got my brush out and started painting a little bit. And the way that that's, things happen with these pens, and you know, if this is your issue, then know that I have it too, is that once you start hitting it with water, then it's almost like you're committed. <laughs> and I started doing a little bit of water on here and it, I just needed to do more and then more and then more. I probably should have quit while I was ahead, but look, then I started getting this color bleeding down further, so I added more ground under it than I had originally intended. And it's just one of those things that you have to be careful of. You almost have to have a plan ahead of time so you know exactly how much you're going to be doing color-wise. So I'm going to have more on my blog about this particular card, including larger swatches of each one of these colors because as I use them, I am going to put together a little cheat sheet for myself that is going to help me and maybe it will help you too. So here's the finished card, which is so bright and happy and cheerful. And I just love all those little faces. Those faces are gonna be great on a lot of different stamps that I have. So you may randomly see them showing up from here, from here on, on different crazy stamps, who knows? <laughs>
Bye-bye.